Guru Ve Gaur Chanjaya Radhika Yatadali Krishna Ya Krishna Bhakta Yatad Bhakta Yanamo Nama Vancha Kalpa Trubhyascha Kripa Shindu Vebacha Patita Nam Pavanevyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasari Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare My Dhanavad Pranam devotees um, So <clears throat> uh, before we even get started I wanted to um, thank uh, devotees especially Shri Gaur Prabhu in Hawaii who gave me encouragement to try to create better sound uh, for these videos and uh, encourage me that we finally have been able to get <laughs> a microphone. I'm sorry for obfuscating uh, my face here. Uh, but yeah, so we are going to go ahead and do the necessities on following videos from today to get this up and running. I just have to charge it up and everything, uh, but to see if that'll make a difference. Uh, I did want to address um, sort of a a extended, not extended in terms of time, but just a expanded explanation on a question that I receive regarding when Gurudev leaves the world, which is technically called Samadhi. And how do we understand the necessity for guidance in the absence, which was the question, in the absence of Sri Guru? So I think a very, very important understanding to be gleaned um, is to first understand two things. One is what is samadhi? Because we samadhi is not just the external ceremony that we sometimes even witness now on Facebook when an acharya or Sri Guru leaves and it's recorded now when the body is prepared for samadhi and the uh, the hole is dug and salt is put and all these sort of things. Uh, this is not the samadhi. Samadhi has already taken place. This is the, the seva, samadhi seva. In other words, it's, it's serving Sri Guru in his samadhi. So the word samadhi means samadhi. So sama means equipoised or equal. D means here when the mind becomes fixed, just fixed in a certain state. So, Sri Guru may manifest three states of consciousness. One is called Bahiradasya. It means when Guru Dev is in external consciousness and he's guiding and teaching his students and disciples and performing other kinds of seva in external consciousness. One is called Ard Bahiradasya, which is when Guru is partly in an internal state and partly in an external state. And then there's Antradasya. Antradasya means when Guru Dev enters into a completely internal state. These three different states of consciousness may be manifest throughout different times in the Acharya Lila. At the time when Guru Dev performs his Samadhi Lila, he enters into Antradasya, means the eternal pastimes of Mahaprabhu Radha Krishna, and he no longer directly reciprocates in Bahirdasya. This is the meaning of the word samadhi and the practical expression of samadhi in relation to a disciple. There is no such thing that the Guru has died. Do you understand? Only those who have the conception of being the material body could ascribe that a person who is completely transcendental, both in their sadhak form, which is transcendental in the Leela of Mahaprabhu, and their internal form, which is their Siddha Deha in relation to Radha Krishna Yuga, could be material and therefore has died. So there's no such thing that Guru has died or Guru uh, has passed away or any of these phrases which are applicable to the material body. right? And to consider Guru Dev to be like that is actually mentioned if one thinks that the, the Shalagram Shila is a stone or one thinks the deity is stone, one thinks the Guru is an ordinary man, or uh, etc. This is a... Uh, Naraki. Naraki means they're like, uh, has a hellish mentality. You understand? 
So we should never think like that. So then, Mukunda, what is the actual samadhi and what's the explanation? How does it work? So as I mentioned, Gurudev enters Nitya Lila Pravishta. He enters into Nitya Lila Antaradhasya and therefore is absorbed there. The transcendental body of Gurudev, uh, the disciples serve the transcendental body of Gurudev by placing it in a samadhi, which is already expressed by Gurudev by being an antaradasya. Now, what does that mean for the disciple? That will come according to the disciple's maturation. If the disciple is not mature, he thinks my Guru has passed away uh, and I had so much association with the Guru and I learned many things from Guru, but now he's passed away. So either I will simply hang on to the memories of my Guru Dev in his Vapu, means his physical manifestation, or as some people may try to emphasize, you need living guidance. So I'll try to find a replacement for Sri Guru, right, in the form of another sadhu, uh, and maybe one who everyone finds popular or something, I'll find that sadhu, and that will be my living guidance uh, for my Guru Dev, because my Guru Dev has passed on. So these are different kinds of really misconceptions in terms of how to understand the Samadhi of Guru. The Samadhi of Guru for the immature disciple is what I just described. For the mature disciple, he sees that my Guru Dev has entered into Antaradhasya. My Guru Dev many times spoke of his Antaradhasya in his Harikata. When he would speak of Goa Lila or speak of Radha Krishna's Lila, he was in Antaradhasya. These expressions in the Harikata were not coming from simple intellectual uh, understanding or from memory or they were his internal experience being manifest onto the heart and ears of those who were eager aspirants on the path of bhakti. So Sri Gurudev now, he has entered into the eternal pastimes and now his Harikata that he's given over the course of his Charya Lila, it is still living. It is still a living dynamic. It is not that because he's passed, then these are memories, right? Because sometimes we write, I mean, it's, it's common pollen, so I'm not criticizing it, that the, we're having Srila Prabhupada memories or Srila Gurudev memories, you understand? Which are individual disciples' recollections or whatever of their time with Sri Guru. But because we're conditioned by time, we can kind of couch that as that was history, that was the past, and now we're reflecting on it in the present. So many things like that and other things give an immature disciple the idea that Guru Dev is no longer present. But then a serious consideration has to come in. If Sri Guru is no longer present, and every day I'm still singing Guru Ashtakam, to whom am I singing? Am I singing to the memory of the Guru? Or how does this work? <laughs> right? And every day, maybe by the photograph or by the Murti of Guru, I'm going and I'm touching the lotus feet of the Murti and I'm saying so many stav and stuti. Is it that this is a statue and that I'm just doing this all out of the ritual of what's to be done in the morning and Guru Dev is not present? And, and if Guru Dev is not present in his Murti or picture, then is Krishna present in his Murti or picture? So all the seva that's being done for Mahaprabhu, Radha, Krishna, etc. You understand? So if we don't accept that the eternal presence of Guru is the reality in any sister's life from the time that they have met Guru, not from the time they took initiation in one life, from the very first Gata Samskar, deep impression created by Guru in some lifetime previously. My Guru Dave has manifested again and again and again. You understand? And if we think, oh, Guru Dave is again repeatedly having to come to the material world because he has disciples. It's also a misunderstanding. Because Guru Dave never comes to the material world. Guru Dave always sees by a transcendental drishti, dipya drishti, that I am in Vrindavan, I am serving. So, for any Guru who has mm, either descended directly from the spiritual world or who has become Siddha, for them, Seva Sadika Rupin Siddha Rupin Chakri. 
they're internally serving in their Siddha Swaroop and externally in Sadhak Roop and Gaur Leela they're also serving. So there is no coming to the material world again and again and again. So for the mature disciple, he thinks my Gurudev has never left. My Gurudev now being in Samadhi becomes the essential ingredient in what Srila Rupa Goswami has described in the four elements of surrendering to Guru. The first four elements in the 64 Angas of Bhakti is Guru Parasraya, Tata Diksha Shikshadi, Vishram Dena Guru Seva. So what is Vishram Dena Seva? Vishram Dena Seva means that Seva in which all barriers are broken and heart to heart or intimacy can take place. You understand? So this is the actual meaning of Vishramba, when all barriers are broken. So if the barrier of material consciousness, I am this body, is still present, it's not Vishrambena Seva. My Guru Padma told me in our last meeting, actually, very interesting. In the very last meeting that we had uh, physically, uh, he mentioned, it is very difficult for the disciple during the Guru's Vapu Lila, when he's manifest. To understand Vishram Bena Guru Seva. Why? Because if the disciple himself is not really realized, there's still vestiges of bodily consciousness there, so they associate Vishram Bena Seva naturally with proximity to Guru to do savers like massaging, cooking, cleaning in the association of Guru. They call this is Vishramba Seva, close Seva. But actually it's called Vishram Bena Guru Seva. It's not called proximity. Guru Seva. So we've just conflated those two ideas as long as we're in our semi-material consciousness. <laughs> because as long as you're on a spiritual path, it's not completely material, but semi-material consciousness, we still understand things like that and relate to Vishram Bena Guru Seva as the idea of proximity Seva. So service is done in proximity to Guru. So Guru Deva said, but when Guru enters Samadhi, if the disciple is genuine, and if the disciple is mature, then they can really grab the meaning of Vishram Bena Guru Seva. How? Because they will see that how can I perform bhajan? Atahashi Krishna Namadi Nabavad Draimindriyai Seva Mukhi Jivadok Panyavas Vratira. With my material senses, how I perform bhajan? Material senses, Draimindriya, they cannot serve Bhagavan. So without the infusing or subsidizing of Guru Kripa in my body, in my existence, my body would not be fit to do seva. I would not be fit to recite Stav and Stuti. I would not be fit to serve Takaji on the altar. I would not be fit to cook for Takaji. I would not be fit to do Harikata seva. It is only the Kripa of Guru that can manifest the potency for these things to become Bhakti Seva. Therefore, Guru Dev cannot be absent. He must be present, or she must be present. Therefore, we should be able to see in my bhajan sadhana every day from the very beginning. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Radhikaya Priyatmane. Whatever your Guru Pranam is, right from the very beginning. Nama Om. I'm doing my Saranagati again this morning to Sri Guru Padapadma. My Guru Padapadma is present there. I'm not praying to a memory. I'm not praying to an ideal. I'm not doing a ritual. I'm doing a namaskar onto the lotus feet of my ever-present Guru. Where will Guru stay in this world when he's absent from your external vision? It is called the Riddhoya Mandir. Mono mono mandire Rani Shidin Krishna Murari Sri Krishna Murari It's very beautiful bhajan saying, Oh Krishna, can you come and reside in the heart temple, the temple of my heart? Why? Because the temple of my heart, it cannot be mm, corrupted by so many external ideas and influences. We keep the temple of the heart. When Mahaprabhu told to Raghunath Das Goswami, Antara Nishtakara Bhaya Lokya Vyavyahara. Keep all of your Vyavyaharic 
existence in that space. The word Yavyahar means external life. I have to work, I have children, I have family, I have this, I'm that, I'm this, uh, upari, that upari. All keep it internally in your Ridoy Mandir. Oh, Antra Nishtakara. Make all your endeavors really deeply internal around the savor of your Ridoy Mandir. What's in that Ridoy Mandir? Open the door of that Ridoy Mandir. What's in that Ridoy Mandir? Oh, my Sri Guru Padapadma. Sri Guru Parampara. Shima Nityananda Prabhu, who is the potency to reveal what is Mahaprabhu. That Mahaprabhu is fully present in the Ridoy Mandir. He's the pinnacle of Rasaraj and Mahabhav Swarup. Through the Leela of that Mahaprabhu, which is Adoja Leela. Saitaranga Jebi Dube, Sri Radha Madhavantaranga. Gorangera Rasanave, Saitaranga Jebi Dube, Sri Radha Madhavantaranga. Through that Gaur Leela, I can enter the Antaranga of Sri Radha Madhav Seva. You understand? So, all of these things, all of the Harikatha, the mantras and the Rahasyan Dhyan of those mantras given by my Guru David Diksha, when I become mature, now I'm keeping them very dear, very close in the Ridoya Mandir, locked with key. Not being spread everywhere, randomly speaking to various people and about the nature of my Diksha mantra, all these things. They're being locked and kept in the Ridoya Mandir. You understand? In this way, by Shruta Ikshita, by the path of hearing, which is the path of Darshan in Sadak Rup, Shruta Ikshita Path, the path of seeing Darshan is through hearing. So when Harikata enters into the heart, it then manifests on all the other senses. And when the senses become purified, then one is able to have Darshan in those senses. So, Premanjana Charita Bhakti Vilochanena Santasa Daiba Redeshu Pilokayanti. When the eyes also become dripped with the salve of love due to it having manifested from the Ridoya Mandir, the eyes will also externally see Bhagavan. In the meantime, Bhagavan will be seen on the lotus of the heart. Tvam Bhakti Yoga Paribhavitam Ritsaroja Eshe Ritsaroja Se on the lotus of the heart. Bhagavan will be seen there, Shrutik Shita Panta, Nanu Natapungsam. For that person whose bhaktis become mature, they'll see on the lotus of their heart, not externalized. When they hear Harikata, oh, that Harikata is flourishing in the heart. So you have to understand the mystery of Shrutik Shita Panta, other than that, and it's an experience, not an explanation. So, so just keep doing bhajan like this, this is the, the real purport. But anyway, so Sri Guru has not left. And therefore now, in the Samadhi of my Gurudev, the feeling and the faith involved in understanding the presence of my Guru rises, as Gurudev told me in that last meeting, it rises naturally to the level of Vishram Bena Guru Seva because it's not on the bodily platform. Because Gurudev is not in Vapu. He's not in his external form. So now internally everything has to be experienced with Gurudev. This is called Visram Bena Guru Seva. I think I told the other day a wonderful story about Ram Chandra Kaviraj and Srinivasa Chajya. Srinivasa Chajya, once in Jajigram, he was sitting and doing meditation, taking Nam. And his wife, for some hours, noticed he was becoming more deeply and more deeply absorbed. So they were thinking, how we will do Seva? We have to bring Prasad, everything. So they bought Prasad. But they didn't want to disturb the bhajan of Srinivasa Chajya. So they left the prasad there. But when they came back hours later into the evening, prasad still there? He has not taken prasad? This went on for two days. After two days, they became very worried. And they saw that the breathing of their Prabhu, Srinivasa Chajya, was very, very labored and very deep. So they thought, we have to call his disciple Ramchandra Kaviraj. So Ramchandra Kaviraj, he came and they expressed everything that was happening. So then he told, oh, please, just be patient. He went and he sat next to Srinivasa Charger. He took his japa mala and he began chanting. And he entered into Antradasha as Karun Manjari. And there he saw his Gurudev in his siddha form as Mani Manjari. And he saw that Rupa Manjari and all Sakis were around. And they were watching 
that Muni Manjari was diving into Radha Kund and then surfacing and taking a breath. This was being seen by his wives in the external body, but he was diving in the Radha Kund. And so hmm, Karun Manjari inquired, what is going on? He said, oh, your Guru Rupa Sakhi is looking for the nose ring of Radhika which was lost in this Radha Kund. So immediately in favor, internally to Gurudev, Karun Manjari dived into the waters of Radha Kund and began to help his uh, Guru Rupa Sakhi search. And actually Karun Sakhi found that nose ring. And then he presented it to his Guru Rupa Sakhi, Mani Manjari, who presented it to Rupa Manjari, who put on the nose of Srimati Radhika. This is called Vishwam Bena Guru Seva. It begins by understanding that my Guru Dev in Sabadi, Nitya Lila Pravesh, he's into Nitya Lila. And every day now I'm serving my Guru Dev in Nitya Lila. I'm not serving a memory of my Guru Dev. I'm not serving an ideal of Guru Dev. I'm not doing a ritual related to the principle of Guru Dev. I'm serving now my Guru Dev in Nitya Lila. My Guru Dev literally told, I will never leave you. To all disciples. He didn't tell to me just personally. He told, I will never leave you. I will always be with you. It's some platitude or it's some encouraging words or, or is it the truth? <laughs> so we accepted, no, Gurudev is speaking 100% truth. Any disciple who is very mature, he can understand how Gurudev is always present. And he practices his sudden bhajan, deeply absorbed. I'm doing bhajan in the presence of my Gurudev. How I'm serving Radha and Krishna without my Guru? Yasya prasada, bhagavat prasada. Yasya prasada, nagati kutopi. How I'm serving Gurudev. If my Gurudev is, I mean, how I'm serving Radha Krishna Mahabhu, if my Gurudev is not present. Therefore, one should always feel that my Gurudev is present. And I spoke on my Sunday class, I believe it was, that one can then see that the Prakash of my Gurudev is also still manifest within the external world. How? Oh, and every sadhu I see and I hear their Harikata, I know that that Harikata is the illumination of my Gurudev in that sadhu for me. That's why we can go and see a sadhu and everybody will get their individual nourishment and individual questions answered, so forth and so on. Because their guru is manifesting as the prakash of that sadhu and feeding them. If the sadhu is not connected to your guru, how can it be Siksha Guru? Very clear in Bhakti Sindhava. Siksha Guru means who's the Siksha manifestation of my Guru Dev. <laughs> right? Because Tata Diksha Siksha Di. So that Siksha continues internally and externally. But there's no replacement for my Guru Dev. I, I cannot say, oh, well, now to have living Sadhu Sangha means that I've replaced the void that's there because my Guru Dev died or passed away. It's a misconception. My Guru Dev is living in my Bhajan Sadhan. My Guru Dev is living in my Ridwe uh, Mandir. My Guru Dev is living in the Sangskars placed in my heart over many lifetimes. My Guru Dev is living in the Kripa Shakti imbued in my Bhajan Sadhan to give realizations and to allow to advance. I don't know how it's possible. How can you advance? If there's no Guru Shakti. This is why it's necessary to hear Harinam and then mantras from a Guru. If, if Guru is simply a temporal appearance, like everything else in the material world, a temporal appearance, then how does that relate to eternality of my aspirations, everything in my practice of bhakti? Guru Dev is an eternal principle. But it's also an eternal manifestation of a person in Goa Lila and in Radha Krishna Lila. Right? You know, who is your Guru Rupa Sakti? If you're aspiring a Manjari Bhav, try to understand who is your Guru Rupa Sakti. Right? If you don't know this thing, then by doing sudden bhajan in a deep way, you can come to understand by the mercy of your Guru Dev from his Antradasha he can reveal. You understand? Many of our acharyas they have revealed openly. He's revealed openly, Naira Mani Manjari. Right? Do you understand? So we know that in our line, some have revealed, some may not. But it doesn't mean they cannot now reveal. It depends on the sincerity of practice and the depth of practice of the sadhaka, the aspirant. Do you understand? So this was meant to be short, just to expand on a question that was asked in relation to Gurudev 
uh, leaving and the necessity for living guru. You understand? So, of course, especially before there's maturation of a disciple, certainly mm, the principle of living guidance is very important. And even for those who become mature, living guidance is also extremely important. But their perspective on living guidance will be different. In mature devotee thinks, my Guru Dev has died and this is the living guidance in replacement of that fact. Mature devotee realizes my Guru Dev is always present and internally he is working and externally he's manifesting his prakash in various sadhus. You understand? All right, my Dandavat Pranam devotees, I didn't mean this to go on long at all, so I will end it here. Uh, oh, Haribo Jiva Pavan Prabhu, my Dandavat Pranam to you. Jai Vancha Kalpatru Visha, Kripashana Vevacha, Patitanam Pavanivyo, Vaishnavivyo Namo Namaha. Jai Radhe Radhe.